In today's video, we will be taking a look at the number one enemy of every single hacker, which is WAF or Web Application Firewall. We will be taking a look at the other side of the Web Application Firewall to how, to how it's set up, how it works, and we'll be using one of the best firewalls in this world, which is the SafeLine. The reason why is because whenever I'm met with this specific firewall, I always scratch my head and I'm thinking, damn, why is this happening? And I almost lose my motivation to hack on the platform because it is so annoyingly good. So we'll be using it in today's video. And maybe if you want to learn hacking, then check out my course, which is down in the description box below. Okay, before we even get started, if you as a developer want to actually get SafeLine to integrate it with your own web application, the link is in the description because it's very good and you should definitely try it out. So let's get going. This is a very simple web application written in Python. And as you can see, app.py file reveals that it only has a one route, which basically here says that we get the parameter name, the query parameter stored in the name variable. And then afterwards we do a return with a just string, which basically is an insecure way of returning stuff and displaying them, AKA we have an XSS here. So let's run this web application to verify that we do have XSS. So as you can see, it's currently running here. So let's just open that up. Yes, of course, open it. Okay, and as you can see, we have a simplistic web application here, which basically if we go name, uh, sorry, name image source xx on error alert one click enter boom we see an alert one and obviously we have xss here so let's say we do have an xss on our platform now what this firewall safeline firewall would do is basically prevent anybody to reach that route and execute code because it will be in the way and prevent it and it's so damn powerful i genuinely cannot express how annoying i get when i see that it, the website is using this as a hacker but as a developer this is definitely going to be your number one priority and choice of choosing a firewall because it's very important and very necessary today because you might mess up in code for example, it might not be as vague as this, but you definitely can mess somewhere up and this firewall will definitely be there to protect you. Okay, so how do you even get started with setting this up? And trust me, it's absolutely super easy. After you have completed the registration process and bought the license, which honestly, it's very cheap, it's definitely not going to be a problem. What you want to do is you want to download this compose.yaml file from their own official website, but then we're going to be obviously doing a bit of tweaks to this file, which is ports right here. I had to update this because it used to be network mode host and you need to set it to ports 8080. Dash 80 if you want to work it if you want it to work for you but it really depends and it's subjective on what you want to use for example this wasn't really working for me so i had to change this specific line the 95 line to ports and add my own ports and what this would do is it will bind this 80 port to the 8080 within this little container so whatever goes to 80 will go here to 8080 so hopefully that makes sense to you i don't know i'm waffling at this point so let's get going so to do that you would type crl-l then this simple little website to basically download this compose.yaml file and save it into the compose.yaml and once you do that obviously it will get saved here and i've just done that and there it is then you would need to create an .env file which will basically if you're on windows or on linux whatever you are you basically need to get the directory to where safeline will be located you need to get the image tag which is the latest but to be fair with you you have documentation also in the description present so you can basically just copy this and use it on your own web application just make sure that the region is set to dash g for the language and everything else but this right here is not really necessary you, we can delete this quite well in the config you have the safeline.yml file which is just basically binding the setting the host docker but you really don't need this either i did this to just basically be more professional but you will see in the video that we won't be using this as much so let's get going so right now what you want to do essentially is start this process and start safeline so how do you do that well, you go docker compose up dash D and click enter and it will start all of the instances which are necessary. So you have to wait until that's done and we will be good to go. And as you can see, we are good to go. So let's go to the safe line. Okay, it's not working for some reason. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So after you go to the login, you'll be able to log into your WAF on localhost. And here is our login page, but you might see this and go like, um, what's my password and username? Well, no need to worry. You basically have it all on your local machine. So let's go over here again to our terminal and let's run docker xx safeline.mgt reset admin, which will give us the one time password and username. And our username usually is admin and the password is something random. 
And as you can see, we have the username admin and a random ass password. So let's just try it out. So admin and then password and boom, login. There you go. So let's now try to protect our own web application. In our own web application, we know that there is a vulnerability here. It's very obvious and very simple. It's XSS. So let's try to protect ourselves using the WAF. Safeline WAF. So let's get going. So first things first, what you want to do right now is click add application. And now this is where the magic kind of happens. We need to enter the localhost domain. So basically click localhost. And here, as you can see, we don't really need this 443 post port. I'm sorry, because we're going to be using HTTP instead of HTTPS. Therefore, you can delete this and leave the port as 80. Why leave the port as 80? Because if you remember here in the Docker Compose file, you can see that we bind everything from 80 to the 8080 port. So our web application, which is protected by a firewall, will be accessible on the 8080 port. And we leave 80 there as just a placeholder or something. I don't know. So now the upstream. What's going to be here in the upstream? Well, the upstream will be our web application. So let's just copy this up and go back to the upstream and delete the trailing slash. And this is our upstream, aka our server, which is running here. So let's get going. So the application name will be Flask App. Nothing too, nothing too scary. And there we go. Once I click submit, I have created this web application within the same line firewall. And now my web application is protected from any a type type of attacks. Again, let's see, this is not really working. But now let's try to visit the so let's try to visit the local host 8080. Boom. And there you go. We can now see hello. Okay, so this is the non vulnerable web application because it's been protected by the WAF or SafeLine WAF, which is good. So let's click the question mark and let's click name and let's maybe try to put something like test to see if everything works perfectly. So test, as you can see, works pretty damn perfectly. And now let's try to put some XSS payload on error equals alert one. Boom. Ah, there you go access forbidden. And I've seen this way too many times because it is so annoyingly powerful and so good. SafeLine definitely should be your choice if you want to protect your web application. And if you see this, I would rather turn my head around because it's so hard to exploit a vulnerability within a web application that's protected by a firewall itself, let alone SafeLine. SafeLine is very powerful and it's honestly underrated in my opinion. So now you know, this is now you know as a hacker on how basically web applications are protected with a firewall from literally simplistic web applications, which is vulnerable. And now you have no idea whether this is vulnerable or not because the firewall was sitting in front of you and the web application and blocking all of the content. And as a developer, now you know how to protect your web application because chances of you making a vulnerability in a big code base are slim, of course, but there could be vulnerabilities. But if you use WAF or SafeLine WAF in this in this case, you are going to be an invincible individual because you obviously, but of course, you need to have your configuration set up correctly because nobody is going to teach you how to do that the correct way if you don't know what you're doing. So you really need to do some digging into documentation and understanding how to use it before you even use it because you can enter, you can give some loopholes to the attackers yourself. But Safe line WAF is definitely invincible. So there you go. Link is in the description if you want to check it out. And also if you want to check out my course, make sure to subscribe, like this video. And as always, peace.